Hello, my name is Becky Healy and welcome to my end of semester presentation. Today, I'm going to be exploring the school to prison pipeline, a topic from week five of this course. First, I'm going to do a quick refresher on what exactly the school to prison pipeline is and briefly explain related concepts. Then I will apply these concepts to media and real life examples. Before I begin, it's important that I address that I am a white woman, therefore I am looking at this highly racialized and gender topic through a limited worldview. As the school to prison pipeline in incarceration disproportionately affects people of color, particularly black people, as well as men, I will never be able to understand the complexities that come with the lived experience of this topic. Content that I will be touching on in this presentation includes racism, slavery, and a brief mention of sexual assault. So what exactly is the school to prison pipeline? The school to prison pipeline is a process in which the education system perpetuates certain policies and punishments that push students out of the school environment and into positions that act as a pathway to eventual incarceration. This phenomenon disproportionately targets students of color, in particular black students. Some examples of this are high expulsion rates and harsher punishments and suspensions than their white counterparts. Some of the most problematic policies are zero tolerance policies, which often have racial biases written into them, something I will exemplify later. In the lecture on this topic, Dr. Bedore shared this really powerful graphic by the American Institutes for Research that displays how black students are three to four times more likely to be expelled or face multiple suspensions than their white peers in the US. But what does this have to do with economic geography? As spoken about in class, Prisons are far from being separated from the economy. Prisons are a huge contributor to the economy because they are both sources of employment and sources of cheap and free labor, especially in places where prisons are highly privatized. The prison industrial complex, which encourages higher incarceration rates for the sake of stimulating the economy, eerily parallels slavery as it involves the displacement and devaluation of people of color in order to exploit them for their labor. There are biases in almost every aspect of life, such as education, over-policing, and the justice system that lead to the over-incarceration of black and brown people that serve the agenda of the prison industrial complex. The school-to-prison pipeline is just one of these systemic tactics. Another example would be herbicide, the intentional decay of certain urban neighborhoods. Let's talk about some examples of how the school-to-prison pipeline plays out. First, I'll be talking about Netflix's new TV show, Grand Army. At the beginning of the series, best friends Owen and Jason decide to play a joke on their classmate Dominique by taking her wallet from out of her backpack and tossing it around. They accidentally drop her wallet down the staircase and when she retrieves it, it's empty. Although they immediately feel guilty and work to fully pay Dominique back due to a zero tolerance policy at the school, Jason is given a week suspension and Owen is given a 60 day superintendent suspension, suspension as he was the one who took the wallet from Dominique's bag. Owen previously had a passion for music and a future as a musician, but his suspension prevented him from performing at an important event. And throughout the show, you can see he becomes increasingly angry and discouraged, alluding to how the suspension affected him mentally. Contrastingly, another storyline in the show follows a character named Joey as she deals with being raped by two of her white male peers, George and Luke. They were arrested, but after it is concluded that Joey has insufficient evidence to claim that they had raped her, George and Luke were released and went back to school without any repercussions from the same zero-tolerance policy that suspended Jason and Owen. The Black Student Union protests the discrimination against Owen and Jason, and one of the members, John, made a speech that includes this very powerful quote. But what about in real life? I'm from Mississauga and I grew up going to school in the Peel District School Board, so I investigated how the school to prison pipeline affects students where I live. A report published in February of this year called A Review of the Peel District School Board highlighted some of the ways in which Black, Indigenous, South Asian, Latin American, LGBTQ+, and other groups face discrimination within the school, the school board. One of the most shocking examples where the school to prison pipeline is present is when faculty called the police on a first grade Black child. The responding officers placed her on her stomach and handcuffed her in response to her hyper and untamable behavior. Such criminalization, especially at such a young age, is traumatizing, dehumanizing, and a prime example of how Black students are forced out of the realm of education and into the realm of law enforcement. A quote which I found to be very powerful is by Royce and James, who says, Anti-Black racism is pervasive, stubborn, and deadly for its victims. 
For many black people, these destructive claws are first exposed at school, the very place where the child's bright future is enshrined to begin. Black students are targeted so commonly in the Peel District School Board that wearing big hoop earrings, do-rags, and hoodies are not uncommon reasons for black students to be kicked out of classrooms and even suspended. In education, by setting some groups up for success and others for failure based on race, gender, class, or any other factor, it is ensured that there will always be a strong flow of disadvantaged people being funneled into the prison system, contributing to the prison industrial complex and providing low-wage forced labor. CORCAN is a Canadian program that employs and trains prisoners in areas of manufacturing, construction, textiles, and services. The Government of Canada describes CORCAN as a key rehabilitation program, but it can be argued that because of the low wages and somewhat irrelevant training that CORCAN provides prisoners, it is just a way for capitalists to source labour that is much cheaper than minimum wage in Canada. Our biased policies, like the zero-tolerance policy Owen from Grand Army had to face, put in place to devalue, discourage, and further oppress Black students so that they will be set on a path that leads them to contribute to the prison industrial complex? Are the students in Peel who grapple with the school-to-prison pipeline just being funneled into the prison system so they can be exploited by Corcan? Well, there are certainly many other aspects at play. I would argue that the school-to-prison pipeline works very closely with the economy and the exploitative nature of capitalism. Thank you for watching my presentation, and I encourage you to look more into the effects of the school-to-prison pipeline in the areas that you live and grew up in.